I'm Bill Kinney, and this is video number 13 in Foundations of Arithmetic, Algebra, and Graphing with a focus on real-life interpretation and application. In the last video, we started a new sub-series on rational numbers. This is part two of that sub-series. Video number 13, the arithmetic of rational numbers, also known as fractions, part two. We looked at an example with pi in the last video. I'm just going to jump right to our next example. For this video, we, by pi, I mean not the number pi, but I mean uh, actual pi that you eat. So here we have another example where we're going to use fractions. Greg estimates it will take him six hours to paint a certain room, and Marcia estimates it will take her four hours to paint the same room. Yes, that Greg and that Marcia. How much of the room can they paint in one hour if they work together? How much in two hours? How long will it take them to finish? We'll see how far we can get. We might just be able to get to the first two questions in this video. I'm not sure if we'll get to the third one or not. Just the, like in the last one, we can try to visualize things. Um, here I won't draw pies, but I'll imagine drawing walls. Of course, rooms are more than just one wall, but Let's pretend all they have to do is paint one wall of a room. So this is the wall they have to paint. And I'm, I'm going to draw this twice, actually, but not to indicate that it's two different walls. It really represents the same wall. But I'm going to think about how quickly Greg can paint this room or this wall and Marsha separately and before I try to think about them doing it together. So Greg. Uh, takes six hours to paint the room. You can look back up here for that. Six hours for Greg and four hours for Marsha. So if the wall represents the room, I'd have to break it into six equal pieces. That's two equal pieces. And for each of these, I have to break those up into three equal pieces. So right about like this is how to split this one up into six equal pieces. So Greg can paint that much of the room, so to speak, in one hour. On the other hand, Marsha takes four hours to paint the same room. So I'm going to split the room up into four equal pieces. Takes Mark, Marsha less time to paint the room, meaning she paints it faster. These are supposed to be four equal pieces. She would be able to paint this much of the room in one hour. So assuming they work at the same time and don't overlap, I'd have to add, in essence, these two areas together and figure out what fraction of the entire wall or room that is to figure out answer to the first question, how much of the room can they paint in one hour if they work together. <clears throat> you could maybe kind of eyeball it. It's that's probably a good idea initially here just to get a, a rough estimate. Um, certainly it's going to be more than uh, two-sixths of the room. You know, if I, it, it'd be more than Greg could paint in two hours because Marsha goes faster than Greg, but it would be less than Marsha, less than Marsha can paint in two hours. Marsha could paint half the room in two hours. So it's going to be somewhere between, think about fractions here, somewhere between two-sixths and one-half, which is the same as three-sixths, that they can paint in one hour. <clears throat> Put down some numbers here. Greg can paint one-sixth of the room per hour. We can think about units here. That's how fast Greg can paint. You might call that Greg's painting rate. For the same room here for both Greg and Marsha, it's the same size, same room. Marsha can do one-fourth of the room per hour. That would be Marsha's painting rate. If we add these two fractions together, that should make sense that that's going to give us 
uh, their painting rate when they work together. And as in the previous video, you get a common denominator to do this, to add these together. Um, should that common denominator be 24? Well, it could be 6 times 4, but you can actually get away with 12 in this case. 12, which is not 6 times 4, still is a number that is a multiple of both 6 and 4. It's 6 times 2, and it's also 4 times 3. 12 is the least common multiple, and traditionally you do try to get a least common multiple. And that's going to make sense with the picture, because for Greg, we can split each of these one-hour segments in half to see how much Greg can paint in a half hour, and it's one-twelfth of the room. Actually, um, in a half hour, so two-twelfths in one hour, that's equivalent to one-sixth. And for Marsha, we can split hers up into um, three pieces of equal size, indicating how much she can paint in 20 minutes, a third of an hour. In one hour, she can paint three of these. One-fourth is equivalent to three-twelfths. Each of these, in both Greg and, and Marsha's case, these thin slices are the same size. Each of those represents one-twelfth of the overall room. Um, and that allows us to see, hopefully you can see visually, that means the answer is going to be, well, two-twelfths plus three-twelfths is five-twelfths. And that's the way we can write it out. One-sixth plus one-fourth. One-sixth is equivalent to two-twelfths. You can jump from one-sixth to two-twelfths by, by multiplying both the numerator and denominator by the same number, two. And one-fourth is equivalent to three-twelfths. You can get from one-fourth to three-twelfths by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by the same number, three. Now we've got a common denominator. We can add those fractions and get um, 2 plus 3 is 5 divided by 12, 5 twelfths. That's how much they can paint the room of the room in one hour. That's their overall combined painting rate is 5 twelfths of a room per hour. We can label that with units. We could have done it with a denominator of 24. If we had done it with a denominator of 24, 6 times 4, it would have looked different, the calculation would look different. One sixth is equivalent to four twenty-fourths, and one fourth is equivalent to six twenty-fourths to get ten twenty-fourths at the end, but that's the same as five twelfths, that's equivalent to five twelfths. Um, you can divide both the numerator and denominator by two to get five twelfths to get that equivalent form. This would be the simplest way to write the answer. Um, as far as the second question, how much can they paint if they do it in two hours? How much in two hours? Let's just answer that quickly. Um, you could do it with the picture if you wanted, and you'd see you'd ultimately get ten, thin, ten of these thin slices shaded, uh, meaning ten twelfths of the room, or redu that reduces to five sixths of the room in two hours. You can think of it uh, in terms of arithmetic as well, as just 5 twelfths plus 5 twelfths, which is 10 twelfths, or 5 sixths. That's the fraction of the room in two hours. I guess you could write that like this, room per two hours as your units. Um, and let me just finish off this video by saying, you know, remember in a few videos ago, I mentioned that multiplication can be thought of as repeated addition, and we thought about in terms of integers. It works the same with fractions like this as well. You can think of 5 twelfths as 5 twelfths as being what you should define 2 times 5 twelfths to be. And the rule then must be, when you're doing 2 times 5 twelfths, is multiply the 2 times the 5 to get 10, and keep the denominator the same. That is indeed one way to think of it. Another way to think of it is 2 is the same as 2 over 1. And when you multiply these fractions, if you're going to get the same answer, 10 12, so you've got to multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. 2 times 5 is 10, 1 times 12 is 12. 10 twelfths, or 5 sixths, is the answer. 5 sixths of the room 
per two hours, and that's our first hint at how to multiply fractions. We'll talk more about that in the next video.